are live from Washington, D.C. This is pretty awesome here. We are set up, and uh, our first guests here, who have traveled all the way from Arizona, are Joe Beth and John Ladd. John, how you doing today? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing really well. Uh, what brings you, uh, I understand this is like your third trip here to a uh, fair here in Washington, D.C. Yep, that's right. Um, we, we keep getting invited back, and uh, we sure appreciate everything that you radio people have kept this issue going. Well, you know, it is such an important issue. Um, Joe Beth, how about you? Uh, do you enjoy coming back and doing this? Yes, I do. You do? And um, how, um, John, how did you... Um, how did how does immigration affect you there in Arizona? Well, our ranch is our our south fence is the border, and we have ten. Your south fence is the border. Yes, ma'am. We the have, posts that are there are the border. We have a steel wall, and uh, we have ten and a half miles of the border, and uh, that they cut that wall or climb it, and they come through our ranch to get to the highway to get a ride to get out of there. And so we, we deal with it every day. Wow. How, how many people are coming through here on a regular basis? Well, right now, that's probably 50 a week. 50 um, a week. We've, in the heyday back in the late 90s, 2000, they were catching 300 a day on our ranch. Uh, got lots of trucks full of dope. That The last one was in February. Cut the wall down, drove through the ranch. 2,000 pounds of marijuana. Uh, we've had 47 of those incidences in three years. Um, got mules, people that backpack dope. Yeah. That, that's the, the big problem because they cut all the fences. Wow. But uh, right now, there's about 50 a week probably. Um, we had a, our new representative is Martha McSally. And okay. she brought out the Homeland Security Committee for the House of Representatives on our ranch. And since that time, the Border Patrol's put more agents on the border. Trying. But are they doing anything? Uh, in, That's the question, isn't in, it? In our area, and it's not the whole NACO area, but on our ranch, it's really made an improvement. And that's one of the biggest things of the improvement in 25 years is they put more people and more assets on the border. And so that's why we're only at 50 a week right now. That's tremendous. So if we multiplied that all along the border, we could really make a difference. That's right. And that's what we've promoted for 20 years is <laughs> border patrol needs to be closer to the border. Well, you know, we see all these stories of particularly Texas and this type of thing where they're just letting the people just walk through all the children from last mm -hmm. year. Joe Beth, that, you know, from your perspective, I, I, you know, I think there's two sides to, to that. All these children coming across, you, your heart goes out to the fact that the kids are coming across. But on the other hand, we don't have the resources, nor should we be in a situation of, um, of doing this. That's right. I can't imagine sending your children across by themselves and and we don't have the resources for them i i hate to sound hard-hearted but they they need to go back they need to go back with their parents their parents need to stay there their countries need to do something to improve their situation there we can't handle all these people i know i know and yet now i understand john this is the time of the year where they'll start coming in more i'm talking about the young kid the kids and everything that you see on the news and everything yeah, it, all of it is <clears throat> cycles with the weather and the time of year, and it, it's also drug season right now, too. It's drug season? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm in the jewelry business, and we always say we always say in January is divorce season. <laughs> I've never heard of drug season, though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they have to clean out last year's crop to put new this new crop in, but uh, it... You know, it's been a joke with our government, and you can't blame one president or one party because both of them have failed miserably in it. And uh, Obama, we've, we've met with Jay Johnson a couple of times. He's been out there. We've met with uh, Kurlikowski, the Homeland Security Commissioner. Mm -hmm. And they're doing what Obama's telling them to. Uh, and that that's the worst thing is they're so blatant uh, that this is what the president wants and this is what we're doing and it's all illegal it, you know 
like Joe Best said, it you, you don't want to be cold-blooded and everything else. But sure. you cross that line, and you're not an American citizen, you're illegal. Correct. If, if you or me went into Mexico, we would not be home for Christmas. Uh, you know, when you talk about that, remember the case of the... Uh, of the um God, I can't remember. It was on Fox News forever about the guy who had the guns that yep. ended up across mm-hmm. the border. Yeah. And and he, he swore it was innocent, turned himself in and everything. They didn't care. They put him in prison. Right. You bet. What do you think about that, Joe Beth? Well, they, you know, Mexico talks about how we're treating the illegals that come across, but their policies are much worse than ours they don't you know they don't treat people who come into their country illegally nice no it's you know why do you think more people aren't more i'll use the word up in arms and doing something about it you know one of the things that i think is kind of demoralizing is that we hear all the time that what the republicans if the republicans got the got the got the senate they already had the house that we would see a difference and yet what we see a lot of times is they they aren't taking those strong positions i mean uh, it's going through the courts now with the amnesty with what um uh, president obama did but um what is since you're so connected what do you see and why is not more happening too much, too much money connected to people and drugs then uh, lobbyists won't let that money go away. Uh, cheap labor, cheap votes, and cheap tomatoes coming in from Mexico. They're afraid of losing votes. I, I think it's a big part of it. You know, in South Carolina, we always have issues coming, you know, issues coming up. And right now, our problem is our roads, is a big problem with our roads. Well, the the governor, the, Governor Haley, has said that uh, she would in, we have one of the lowest gas taxes around. She has said that she would increase the gas tax if it meant a decrease in something in our um, income tax. Okay. But she won't just increase it 10 cents or whatever across the board. Well, they, they can't seem to make up their minds what they're going to do because of, as one of our representatives said, yeah, and it's all about the money. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Well, that, um, <clears throat> when you look at the, this phenomenon, it's been 25 years, but uh, the North American alliance, uh, U.S., Canada, Mexico, trying to be one continent, one country, but... It's just got to be about the money. And then you look at the amount of money we spend fighting drugs, but then there's 27 states that are wanting to legalize marijuana. Sure. I don't get it. Uh, it you know, it's... <laughs> it kind of sends mixed messages. No wonder our children are kind of messed up, right? Sure. Yeah. It, you know, what, what are we trying to accomplish here? You know, you're, you're going to have this uh, $500 million a year program to intercept drugs, but you got 26 con- or states legalizing it. Right. Well, um, I tell you what, we've got uh, we've got some more to talk about with the lads here. Now, I understand that there might be a reality show about in, in border, you know, borders, uh, border patrol here, and and the ranchers here. Um, Joe Beth, you're laughing. Why are you laughing? Well, it's there might be it. It's I think it's called Border Cowboys, and they they need a sponsor for it it's really more about the the ranchers than it's not about border patrol it's about um people who ranch on the border okay um well um john are you looking to be a star well i already am (laughs) (laughs) yes you are you're on wcrs right here live from washington dc and we're bouncing it back to greenwood south carolina who knew right who knew But um, seriously, why would you consider doing a show? Well, we, all of us, we, there's a group of us ranchers that have been involved in this border issue for 20 years. We're all really good friends. And there's been this new increase in reality shows. So this group of people came out and talked to one of our friends and said, could you get your friends together and let's try this? Sure. And... I wasn't really that enthused about it, but then after. <laughs> okay, you can talk to us. I've got plenty of time. Okay. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> well, I I just said I don't want a film crew with me all the time. I said it's going to be pretty boring. But then 
the reality of it is is that it would expose what's going on on the border and how it affects our ranching practices and and that's a big deal because it you can't keep cows where you want them you can't do anything when you don't have fences and so that's what I agreed. I said, well, I, if you look at it that way, in the big picture, it just isn't a reality show, but it'll show America what's really happening on our southern border. Sure. And so that's why I, yeah, I agreed to it. Now, what, um, what, is it that you, what is it you ranch? What do you raise? We raise beef cattle. Beef cattle. And, uh, we've been down there <clears throat> 119 years. My family homesteaded in 1896. And... You have to have fences to, if you want a breeding program, sure. and, and we don't have any fences left, so we got a lot of bulls, and we round up <laughs> the whole ranch at one time. Unbelievable. It, it, it takes a long time, and it used to be uh, about a two-week process, and now it's about a two-month process to get everything rounded up. Wow. And that's all because of the fences being cut, the activity on the border. Um, so, uh, so, so this has to affect your, affect your bottom line. Oh, absolutely. It, it's probably 25% on money and 50% of my time is nothing but fixing fence. Wow. And that's perimeter fence. I, we've, we've got nine pastures on the ranch, and I don't even mess with them. It's just a perimeter fence to keep the cows off the highway. Keep the cows off the highway. Yep. Wow. wow. So what else can you tell us about? Uh, what, is, what are some of the important points to you? We've, I, I've kind of been asking the questions. What would you like to? Uh... Well, we've, what America needs to understand is they, they come through us every day and cut fences and steal whatever they can. But they live with you guys. When, when they get in America, they're going to be your neighbor. Sure. And if you want somebody that's illiterate and doesn't speak English and is going to be a drain on your economy, then keep your mouth shut. But <laughs> if, if you really want to do something and, and you have any patriotism and what America's based on, then speak up. And, uh, you know, you wonder why you don't have any teacher's aid in your school anymore because you got a bunch of interpreters. Uh, what's that doing to your kids' education? You want to go to the hospital and it costs you three times more than it used to? Look at how many people are illegal that are getting free health care. Uh, that's what they need to understand. Well, and I think in South Carolina, uh, one of our issues is with the um, our farmers getting enough help in there to do this. One of the things that is demoralizing to me is the fact that, you know, it is hard work, but we have people that are unemployed in our own sure. country. Why can't we come up with a solution that use, utilizes our own people? Well, um, let me just say one thing. This is WCRS right here in Greenwood. We're talking. They've got a couple of minutes. We're going to continue talking. You, that's a good point. In, in southeastern Arizona, the young people do not want to do manual labor. I know. And uh, So I don't know how to argue that. And you certainly can't pay somebody $25 an hour in a $8 an hour job. And, right. and that's what the illegals are willing to do. And so that's why, you know, cheap labor, Right. Uh, that's what we're looking at. Uh, I've got a so lot what of, do you do? What do you do? Do you have enough labor? Yeah, i got three kids. So. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's where I messed up. I never had any children, yeah. John, John. And, you know, I'm in this radio business and jewelry business. It's tough. i got to yeah. hire everybody. Right. Right. <laughs> well, it, they're all grown now, but that that's part of... Uh, it, it, our deal is uh, we don't have to hire anybody. Wow. And, and, uh, but that is an issue, and, and I don't know how to fix that part of it, but you sure can't pay a whole bunch of money to go fix fence or be a cowboy or anything else. But there isn't anybody that down in our area <clears throat> that doesn't have illegals working for them, the contractors. and. We'll they see. they yeah. did the e-verify. They got fake social security numbers, and everybody's happy. And uh, but there is a problem with our generation that they don't want to work. Right. And they all want to be CEOs and run a computer. I know, and so. that that is one of the big issues. And until we uh, do something with that, Joe Beth, what do you think about as far as that? Yeah, I I don't have a solution for that either. It it's. It, I know it's a problem. There, there should be some kind of program where 
they can come across and work and help with the farm labor and then go back. But what you happens know, is they don't go they back. They don't go back, I know. They don't go back. Yeah. And, you know, to be honest, a lot of them that are coming over now, they're not doing farm labor either. They're, you know, they're lot, becoming CEOs. No, just you. No. Well, <laughs> a lot of the people that are coming over now, too, are, are not good people. You know, they're sure. running drugs and that type of thing. They're well, not, how about that story about the guy that uh, has been arrested, I don't know how many times, right. and was in a car accident, killed somebody? Yeah. Yes. Sure. And, and, he, and there, you know, there's a lot of stories like that, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, he's, he's not the only one that's been arrested and released. And, and the other thing about the children, as far as children coming into the country, we are supposed to give them an education. Right. You know, that's one of the rights that uh, people that are in our country, whether it's illegal or not, right, Tom? I know. that. It, when all of those laws and opinions were made, that was the right thing to do. But when you talk about 30 million people being here illegally, it, it's overwhelming. And we can't afford that. No, we uh, surely can't. Um, I don't know. I, do you need to go? No, we're fine. You're fine? Okay. I tell you what, we're going to hear a quick word from our sponsors, then we're going to come right back. If they've got a little more time, I've got a few more questions. All righty? We'll be right back. Hey, we are back on the air. I'm Ann Eller. I am here with Joe Beth and John Ladd. They are Arizona border ranchers. And I tell you what, how about that... Um, we were talking a little bit, Joe Beth, about education. You're a speech therapist over right. there in mm-hmm. Arizona. So what are you seeing in the schools? Because, you know, one of the things that um, illegals have the right to is, and children have to go to school and get an education. So what are you seeing there? Well, we have a lot of students who don't speak English, so they go in a program, um, ESI, English Structured Immersion, and they get instruction so many hours a day so they can learn English. And that's, you know, it's an extra cost. Yeah, it is an extra cost. Joe Beth, the, the thing that I was um, thinking about was the cost and how is that affecting education? And what would be, do you have any idea of the makeup of, the, of your population in your school? Well, it, it depends. Our school, our school district, it, there's a good percentage of um, Hispanics. I don't know how many don't speak English, um, but on the border towns like Naco and Bisbee and Douglas, they have quite high uh, Hispanic populations and a lot of kids who don't speak English. Some of them don't live in Arizona. They live in Mexico and cross the line to attend school every day, and they're not paying taxes resident taxes how come so they get to come across and go to go to school there how come <laughs> john because they just you're there was, i don't understand yeah. that <laughs> well Nobody yeah me. we don't understand it either and i know at one time the superintendent of naco school and it's just a small k through eight school tried to say you know these kids look we can see these kids coming across every day they're not residents they're not really entitled to an education they're not paying taxes and she got in trouble for doing that like she did she get fired or? no no yes. she didn't get fired but she was told you cannot check their addresses you cannot check your addresses. Well, you cannot verify that they, you know, they, of course, when I they mean, enroll we their... have employees, we have to right. e-verify employees, mm-hmm. don't we? Right. right. <laughs> but when, when they enroll in school, they have to show that they live in the district. And, of course, they were bringing, uh, like, an electric bill saying, you know, this is, where, this is where I live. This is a verification of my address. But, yet she would watch them cross the border every day because so the school really was really right electric there. Bill. Right. It wasn't... You know, it was maybe their grandmas, their aunts, their uncles, their friends, whatever. But it's a drain on the on the school systems. Don, what do you feel about all this? Because this is one of the big issues to me is it's illegal, but also the education aspects. We've seen what's happening to our education system. Well, it, in our part of the world, it, it is really putting a drain on it. And I said earlier about uh, rather than having a teacher's aid, you got an interpreter that uh, it, it really puts a, a burden on the kids that 
even if you're illegal but you can speak English, uh, the, the kids that, that don't speak English have just run down the, the test scores. They don't care. Nobody down there wants to assimilate anymore. <clears throat> when I grew up down there, there were kids that didn't speak English, and about two weeks after school started, they did. Correct. And But now we, we cater to them. We take them out and aside, and we don't want them to assimilate. But uh, <clears throat> there's too much humanitarianism involved in it, and I, I just really am disgusted with the whole thing. I live it every day. This isn't America anymore. I said, we're catering to Mexicans. We're catering to Mexico. We're letting them use us. And I'm not prejudiced, but America is the best country in the world, mm -hmm. and we're letting this third world nation run us down. And nobody in our government wants to stand up and say this isn't right. But then McSally got elected, and, and she is. And Mike McCall, McCall out of Texas. Mm -hmm. They were both down at the ranch on that tour, and, and I admire them, but their two politicians in 25 years have stepped up and said, this isn't right. And the amount of money we're spending on Border Patrol, the amount of money on Homeland Security, and it's crazy. And all you gotta do is say, you're illegal. <laughs> yeah. If they, if they would start sending them back instead of releasing them, they would get the message, if you come across, you're gonna go back. And, Correct. and we no, saw that last stop, year with yes. the with the kids, particularly because sure. yes. that was a big issue. Yep. And uh, you know there was talk of sending them back to their embassies, sending back to their, and that never happened. Right. Right. And whatever happened to them here, we we know they got dispersed in the country, but um, it, it is not about humanitarianism anymore. It's about America, and and why are we letting this happen? And you know we get back here and. It's not just Mexicans. It, every, yeah. every nation in the world is sending people here illegally. Because, well, why wouldn't you? Because we're the greatest yeah, right. country in the nation, in <laughs> the world, yeah. But uh, the reality is, is that our immigration system is completely broke because we don't send anybody home. <laughs> that's a yeah, problem. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's a problem. It is. So what would you like to tell my listeners that they need to do down there, John? We're in South Carolina. We have issues like we talked about with the farming. But aside from that, what would you like to see happen? Well, it, it, if you're tired of putting up with illegals living around you, make sure your voice is heard. And uh, don't be bashful. And, you know, they, they say the squeaky wheel gets the grease. But if I'm not sure that's true anymore. Well, I, uh, or which squeaky yeah. wheel gets the most <laughs> grease is the question, right? Right. Well, it 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 we've been a squeaky wheel, but I don't know how much grease we've got. But it maybe there's a chance of it. And then look at the people that you elect. Uh, and other than that, I I have no other answer because uh, if we want to have a revolution over this deal, then let's do that. But if you can't depend on the people that you elect to public office then there's a problem there, too. Absolutely. Well, you know, I said when, when, when they had the um, issue in um, over the um, being able to serve, people can serve who they want to serve. Yeah. Look at the excitement that people got upset about that, about uh, if you're an open business, you need to be able to serve yeah. all people. Yeah. You can't say no to somebody. Yeah. People, look at how excited people get about that. Yep. If if we got as excited about some of these other issues, right. would it make a difference in our country? I think so. I think well, so, too. I agree with you. Absolutely. Well, listen, I appreciate you taking the time to sit down and fill us in. I, I hope we see you on a reality show, <laughs> Border Cowboys. <laughs> Coming to a TV station near you very soon. Um, you also um, were in Dennis Michael Lynch's uh, They Come to America, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I bet that was quite an experience. Well, I, it was. He, he's quite quite the individual, but uh, we, we spent a lot of time when he filmed that. And, mm. uh, that if, if somebody wants to look at that, that is pretty much... Is well, that real? That's it is. What it's we it's real. It. Yep. They, they are good movies. They are. Mm -hmm. They are good movies. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time f with us. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. Y'all have a great day and have a good time, and maybe we'll catch up with you again. Okay? You okay. Well, thanks. thanks. All righty. Bye-bye.